Hi everyone, Paul here. Um, just thought I would do a short video and uh, go through some of the things that happened and uh, worked, <laughs> I suppose, uh, during the uh, E11 build that I did recently. I've just finished this literally yesterday. So um, thought I'd do a quick video. I'll run through how all the electronics work and I'll run through some of what went into building the this uh, particular E11 blaster. So uh, the whole process started when I came across uh, the Blast FX electronics package. Uh, it's, a, it's a package for multiple blasters. You can't, you don't just have to do an E11 with it. You can do any number of different blasters with it. There are different sound files on it. So it's very versatile. Um, but for me, it was a complete package. It gave me lights. It was gonna give me sounds, lovely little counter. You can hook it up to a, a mini scope display from uh, Tramp as well. The Blast Effects comes from Tramp. Um, Paul Whitrow is the guy that makes it over at Tramp. If, if you put Tramp, search capital T, capital R, AMP into Facebook, you'll turn up his page. Um, brilliant electronics package. Um, so I thought, I want to build one of these. What's going to be the best way to go about that? ordered the package, then started to look around, decided that the best way to do it would be via a Doopy Doos resin E11 kit. Um, the main reason for that, the kit comes basically as a hollow tube, so you can put all of the electronics inside if you want. Um, you haven't got to hollow anything out um, for, to get the main electronics in if you want to. Uh, I went a slightly different route um, I ordered a 3D printed Hanksler box from a chap called Lee McCormack. Uh, he has a, a shop on Shapeways called Shadow Defence Systems. Uh, he does the Hanksler box, he does a couple of other bits that he does as well that I'll show you as we go through. Um, the Hanksler box is really brilliant for this electronics package. Basically all of the electronics sit inside it apart from the switches and things for the trigger. Uh, the, the LED flash um, so everything's self-contained in there all you've got to do is worry about wiring little bits out brilliant um, the scope came from Bulldog Props again Facebook page if you look on Facebook for Bulldog Props you'll turn up his page he does these excellent um, uh, resin M38 scope kits absolutely brilliant the one I bought was a hollow version he does them with all the internals that work so if you want a working resin scope he does that I decided not to go for that because I wanted to put the mini display um, mini scope display in from blast effects as well so I went for a hollow one the whole process then was really easy to put that in drill a small hole put all the electronics inside seal it up with the lenses and away you go really very simple um, the battery in this is a thousand milliamp hour lipo just sits in um, where the magazine it sits the magazine itself is held in with a couple of rare earth magnets just to hold it a little bit securely um, there's a battery charging system now this again this little plate on the back is another one of Lee McCormack's 3d printed items it houses the on off switch at the top um, and it's also got a I think it's a micro USB uh, port that's um, a board from eBay um, which will manage all the charging for the lipo battery so it won't overcharge it it'll prevent it from uh, discharging too far so it means you can put the lipo battery in basically and forget about it if you want to I decided to make my battery removable so that I, I'm a little bit dubious with LiPo still so I wanted to be able to check the, the, the health of the battery and things so for that purposes it's easiest if, if it comes out so it's just on a little connector that sits in there. Um, the rest is pretty much the Doopy Doos kit um, just modified to take the electronics you have to hollow out where the trigger goes 
Um, there's a, an acrylic, a clear acrylic tube. I think it's a 22 millimeter tube with three millimeter walls that goes in where the barrel would sit and then the LED sits on the end and that gives you the flash. Um, didn't like the DP Do's power cells that much so uh, I got some uh, 3D printed ones from Shapeways. These are really, really nice. They've got lots of little detail on them. Um, the paint job, basically Halford's plastic primer and then Halford's satin black various weathering techniques mainly dry brushing um, that's where you, you put a small amount of paint on the brush wipe it right out so that the brush looks dry and then brush where you want and you get this sort of effect on on things where uh, you can see like it'll it'll leave paint on highlights and look like scratches and things um, so that's that's one of the paint effects and then there's there's a a dark brown wash on here I use MIG model making washes um, that's pretty much it really um, and then there's a, a flat clear coat a Tamiya flat clear coat sprayed on just to dull it back that's basically the the paint job um, so yeah let's have a look at how it all works so as I said before take the end cap off this is this comes as a removable end cap from Doopy Doos. Um, what I did was I put a little bit of foam in the back. Now what that what that does, normally there's a recoil spring in the real gun which pushes the end cap and keeps it firm in place. Um, but obviously that's not here on this so what I did was I put a little ring of foam inside the end cap that just creates enough pressure to hold the end cap on and stop it rattling. Um, you still do get rattling from the end cap, but that's the, the D-ring on the back. So, yeah, behind the end cap, we have Ian's lovely little 3D printed mounting board for the charging circuit and the, the switch. Basically, just switch it on. When we switch it on, you should see the scope come to life and then the counter will come off and we get the charge up sound. Let's put the end cap back on. Now, when you pull the trigger, you've got an E11 blaster, the sound comes out, there's a flash, the acrylic tube where the barrel is means it lights up down the barrel. Uh, if you press the reset button on the Hengsler box here once, that changes it to a heavy blast, slightly different sound, and a longer flash. And what I think is really cool, <laughs> press it again, you're now in stun mode. And the color changes to blue, color changes to blue, and um, you get that fantastic sun sound from A New Hope. Um, with the display you can have this which is counting down from a hundred um, now you see that counting down from a hundred now as you get down to 30 rounds it gives you a warning 20 rounds it gives you a warning 10 rounds it gives you a warning and when it's empty um, basically you get an empty sound uh, as we're going through I'll try and show you that as well um, if you press the reset button here on the Hengsler box, Hengsler box twice that changes the display you've got this lovely little sort of meter display which again is counting down there you go see? or press it twice again you've got a third option which is actually it counts how many shots you've made totally since you turned it on. So that's pretty cool too. Um, you can also mute the sound if you press the trigger and then press the reset button. 
Now you've got no sound, still flashing, and all the other functions still work. You can still change the blast. You've just got no sound. Turn it back on again, pull the trigger. Now the sound's back. Uh, so you just pull the trigger and hit the reset button and that mutes your sound um, and turns it back on again. Okay, so um, that's pretty much it for the function. We're, we're getting close. I'll just, uh, just run this down. There we go. So that, that's the warning at 30. Slightly different warning at 20. Just gets a bit more urgent, basically. That's the, the 10 round warning. That's your last shot. Now it's empty. You just get an empty sound, no blast. There's no flash now. Until you hit the reset button, which recharges it. That's gone back to 100. And you're back to normal function again. Okay, so turn it off, remove the end cap flip the switch across and to charge the battery um, you just make sure the switch is turned to the off position and plug in your USB cable you can see there there's a, a little red light come on now that means the battery is charging when the battery is charged the light will turn blue on this particular board I believe some of them turn green um, the circuit board will prevent the LiPo battery from overcharging because that can be tricky with LiPos. Um, and it also prevents the battery from uh, discharging too far as well. Okay, I'm gonna take that out. So the installation was, was pretty straightforward. Um, what I did with the doopy Doos kit was uh, where this Magwell glues on, this bit here, um, before I glued that on I actually cut a hole in there and that gave me access to the inside of the tube to be able to, to thread cables through. There's a small six millimeter hole in, in the, the receiver in, in the, the tube of the gun behind the Hengsler box bracket and then there's another hole six millimeter hole that goes through the bracket and into the back of the Hengsler box. So most of the cabling for the, the trigger there's a rumble pack in here as well that I forgot to mention. Um, so you get tactile feedback through the grip. So they're, they're mounted in here. The cables are, are then passed up through the tube using this little hole. I can then work them through the six mil hole and into the Hengsler box. Have to cut the cables because the blast effects comes all pre-wired, um, which is great. Uh, but it does mean that you've got components on the end of all the wires, so you've either got to put a, a bigger hole in to get the component through, or you've got to cut the wires, feed the wires through, and then solder them back together, which is what I did. Um, the scope just has a, a pair of power leads, a positive and a negative. They come down and they connect into the, the, the same place for um, power feed that the, that the main board does. So when you turn the switch on, the scope and the main board both come on together. Um, just kind of makes sense. If you're going to have the gun on, then everything comes on. You could put them on separate switches, I suppose. Um, Power-wise, uh, the switch is connected into the board and into the battery. So you, when the, the, the switch is one way, everything's powering the system. When it's the other way, it's connected to the charging board and you can charge from it. Um, all pretty straightforward really. Well, that's um, a bit of a look at uh, the 11 that I've just finished. And um, yeah, I hope you like it. Um, I'm really, really pleased with how it's come out. I, I, I think 
this electronics package really just kind of lifts it above what you'd normally find in a replica blaster. Um, you've got a working blaster. How cool is that? <laughs> it's brilliant, isn't it? Um, so yeah, my ideas and thoughts on the blast effects, how to fit it and how it works. Thanks for watching.